Yeah, Vladimir Putin is a thug, an autocrat, a despot, and a warmonger. Uh, and his military aggression uh, in Ukraine is completely unacceptable, uh, and he should get his troops out. There's no doubt uh, about that, and he should be roundly condemned. Uh, this is not new uh, for uh, Putin uh, or the Russian state. Uh, it is a long his history of treating uh, its neighbouring uh, countries as a prison house. Uh, in fact, famously, Tsarist Russia was the prison house of nations that denied uh, independence and self-determination to those nations. More recently, we've seen uh, the Russians commit horrors in Afghanistan, uh, a horrendous war in Chechnya. Uh, we saw the uh, Russian-dominated version of NATO sending troops into Kazakhstan to help uh, the Kazakhstan government put down a workers' revolt against rising uh, energy prices. But of course, all of the people who are now condemning what Putin, or most of them, who what Putin has uh, did in Chechnya or Kazakhstan uh, never condemned those things. They're condemning what he's doing in Ukraine, but not those things. They're selective uh, in their standards when it comes to uh, Russian warmongering, and indeed, as many people have pointed out, many of the nations condemning him for what he's doing now more than willing to launder uh, Russian oligarch money in the Irish Financial Services Centre or in the city of London. Uh, so we are not going to go along with the one-sided uh, double standards uh, that are being deployed by a lot of the speakers uh, in this debate. Uh, because, of course, the people of Ukraine uh, have the right to self-determination, they have the right to territorial integrity, uh, and Putin should get out. But to pretend that NATO have no responsibility for this, that they are somehow good guys in all of this situation, is to be utterly dishonest. NATO has relentlessly expanded eastwards uh, since the end of the Cold War, uh, recruiting, moving 800 kilometres eastwards and doing on an annual basis uh, military exercises on the Russian border. The Defender Europe uh, exercises, which take place every year, 28,000 troops last year, including uh, naval military exercises in the Black Sea, that's militarism too. That's military provocation. And this is two big military political blocs uh, vying for spheres of influence. And my, my very, very strong advice to the people of Ukraine, from a country uh, that is militarily neutral, uh, and that established uh, itself as a state in opposition to the disaster of the First World War and to the, uh, to the oppression of empires is do not align yourself with NATO because they are a, war a warmongering military alliance uh, that is also headed up by military thugs. Have we forgotten what the United States did in Iraq? We had the same justifications there. Saddam Hussein was a dictator, absolutely. A brutal murderer of his own population. Somebody willing to attack neighbouring countries. All true. And that was used by the United States to launch a war which was a disaster. A million people killed. Utter disaster for the Middle East. Does that hypocrisy of the United States continue? It absolutely does. As we speak, arming the Saudi regime, a brutal dictatorship to the teeth, as it conducts a war in Yemen where tens of thousands of people are being killed. So we uh, raise, as an alternative, to the banner of warmongering, of siding either with a thug that is Putin uh, or the military aggressive alliance which is NATO, the banner of internationalism, of opposition to war. War will not solve, or militarism will not solve, uh, the very dangerous conflict uh, in Ukraine. We need to oppose war and we need to build a movement of international solidarity against warmongering, whether it's from the Tug Putin or whether it's from the NATO US dominated military alliance.